the stone mill is the oldest tool of man. At the very beginning of civilization, man was using the stone to break food into small particles that he could more easily cook and digest. And within time, mills like this were commonplace. They were part of every home. And for hours a day, women usually would grind grain into flour. And this built our civilization. Around 1250, we were moving to the point that we were learning to mill in a centralized mode with large mills that were driven by water or by wind before by animals and humans. And that led us to what we have today, and that is a very, very large industrial complex, highly centralized, where most of our grains are transformed into highly refined products with a lot of the most beneficial part of those products going somewhere else, for instance, into animal feed. This each one of these situations had advantages and disadvantages for humanity, for society, for users. And the same is true here. We can produce a lot of food here and feed a lot of people, but we lose a lot of the benefits of what grains give us in so doing. And this is why we're moving to the new situation today where the stone mill is back in the hands of the consumer. The consumer can decide exactly which grains she wants to eat. She can take those grains and mill them at the very last moment when she needs flour and therefore have all the freshness that those very special foods have to offer. And what this means is that producers of high quality grains, high quality identity preserved grains, have the opportunity for new markets to open as more and more people become equipped with stone mills. So the stone mill is an enabler for the success of heritage grains, the success of land race grains.